Hi everyone, it's Jennifer and thanks for coming back by. Today is another day of My Favorite Crafty Things 2014. I hope you're finding this series very helpful. Today we're going to be talking about inks and taking care of inks and tools for inks. Got lots to share. Now keep in mind there are a lot of great inks out there. I'm just going to share with you the ones that I've had the best luck with over the years. Now also remember that all the links are below my YouTube description and on my blog. And over on my blog I have great shopping discounts and huge giveaways. So be sure to stop back by every day of the series. Okay, let's go ahead and start with some of the basics. Now there are a few black inks that I use. There's one that I use more than any other, and that is the Hero Arts Black Dye Ink. I've used this ink for probably 15 years now, and it's by far my favorite. You can stamp it and then do watercolor over it. You can't use Copic markers with it, but that's really the only thing that you can't use it for. It gives a nice crisp black image, and it's very dark black, very solid black. Now this ink pad, I actually just got a new one. I had the same one for probably the you know 12, 15 years, and I just finally replaced it. I, I don't know, these ink pads last forever. So about 99% of the time when I do black stamping, this is the ink pad that I reach for. It's great with colored pencils and Gamsol. It's great with watercolor. It's just a great all-around ink pad. Anytime I stamp a greeting, this is the one I reach for. Now this black ink from Hero Arts is a dye ink, which I'll talk about in a little bit. There is an oil-based pigment ink out there that many people like for basic black stamping, and that is the VersaFine Onyx Black. A lot of people use this for almost all of their black stamping. However, it does stay wet a little bit longer, so you have to be careful not to smear it. It doesn't stay as wet as long as most pigment inks, but you, it does stay wet long enough that you could heat emboss it if you want. It does give a super detailed stamp image, and it is nice, crisp black. So these are both good inks for your basic stamping. And once this dries, you can use it with watercolor and markers. And it does dry pretty quickly. I tend to use this with clear embossing powder for a nice raised black e image. It really is beautiful. Now there is one last black ink that I like, and this is the My Favorite Things Black Licorice Hybrid Ink. So this is an ink that kind of has the properties between a dye and a pigment ink, but what is great about this ink is that you can use it with Copic markers, and it does not bleed at all. There's a whole line of gorgeous colors in this hybrid ink line. So if you want a, just a good ink that could be pretty much used with anything, this is a good option, but I use this black one quite a bit. Okay, now let's talk about white inks. There are a couple white inks that I really like. The first is the Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink. Now I have tried many white pigment inks, many, many, and I always go back to this one. This has been the one that gives me the best results every time. Now you'll see that it isn't a perfect 100% crisp white. None of the inks offer this. If you want it to be 100% white, just put on a coat of uh, white embossing powder and then it will be crisp white. But I love the look that you get of the soft white on a colored paper. Now there is also white stays on ink. I love white stays on ink for stamping on transparency or clear sheets like for shaker cards or whatever or on other surfaces. Now this ink comes with the reinker. You have to reink it quite often. It dries up, but that's okay. It comes with the reinker. And check out how crisp that white is on a transparency. Just beautiful. Now you can also use this on colored cardstock and get a, get, get a pretty crisp white image from it too. So this is another great option for white ink. Stays on can be tricky because you got to really clean it off your stamp and the ink will really stay on your stamp if you don't clean it off. I have learned from clear stamp companies that it's best not to use the stays on cleaner because it can damage your clear stamp. So I use Ultra Clean, which is safe for everything, and my Hero Art Scrubber Pad. Now I'll talk about these cleaners a little bit later in this video, but check it out. It will take the, um, the ink completely off, the stays on ink completely off your stamps. Now clear ink is another must-have ink. I like the Versamark ink. This gives a nice tone-on-tone -tone look on whatever color cardstock you stamp on. But I don't really use it, honestly, a whole lot for that. You could just do it like a soft tone-on-tone -tone background or maybe add some pigment powder over that to, and that clear ink will hold the pigment powder and make it nice and shiny. What I mostly use Versamark for is to add heat embossing powder to it. And I'll talk about that in an upcoming video. But Versamark is a great, nice, crisp ink. So now it's time to jump into the world of colored inks. Now there are so many colored inks out there and there are a lot of great ones. I'm going to share with you today the ones that I've had the best luck with over the years. Now there are two types of inks that I use mostly. That's dye ink and pigment ink. 
Now there are also some specialty inks, which I'll talk about later in this video. I'm not going to go into a huge explanation of dye versus pigment inks here, just a brief one. I have done a video that gives a bigger explanation on the two in a very simple way, so it might be helpful to you. I will link to it here and in my description below. In that video, I talk about the difference between dye and pigment, and I also talk about hybrid and chalk, which are usually kind of in the middle of those two types of inks. So let's go ahead and do a really quick explanation of dye versus pigment, basically just the things you need to know to get you going. For my comparison, we're going to look at Hero Art Shadow Ink, which is a dye ink, and Mama Elephant's Creative Color Ink, which is a pigment ink. Now really the most important thing you need to know about the difference between these two inks is that dye ink dyes the paper. It, the, the, what it does is in the name of the ink, so it's easy to remember, the ink absorbs into the paper. Now you'll see it's kind of see-through on your finger. Now pigment ink sits on top of the paper. It's more like a kind of like a paint and it sits on top of the paper. And you can see that on my fingers here. The pigment ink is opaque, whereas the dye ink you can see through. And when I try to wipe this off, the pigment ink comes off because it's on the surface. But the dye ink absorbed into my finger, it dyed my finger, so it doesn't come off completely. Now with dye inks, oftentimes when you stamp them, look how splotchy it is. It takes some time to kind of dig into the paper and really dye it. Whereas pigment ink, what you get on the surface is what it's going to be because that ink stays on the surface. So here on the dye ink on the left, after it's given some time to soak in, you can see that you get a nice crisp image that's very similar to the pigment ink, which is crisp right away. However, that pigment ink, since it's sitting on top of the paper, it does stay wet for a while. So you could smear it if you're not careful or heat set it, or you can put clear embossing powder on it and heat emboss it. And although dye inks take some time to kind of absorb into the paper and even out, it dries instantly because it goes into the paper. I find myself reaching for dye inks more than any other ink. Now there are three dye inks that I really like and it's because they have a unique property about them. Now all three of these inks I believe are made at the same manufacturer so they have the same formulation. So any of them have these properties. What's unique about these inks is that when they stamp, into the paper, stamp onto the paper they really do even out over a few minutes. So it may be splotchy at first but it will kind of smooth out and give you a nice solid image. That's common with dye inks, but especially with this formulation. Now the first um, ink here is the Hero Art Shadow Ink. This has been out the longest. Hero Art's had these inks for a very long time, so there are a lot of colors. And they have soft inks in this collection and mid-tone inks in this collection, which are a little bit darker, but they are both shadow inks. And this is the ink that I probably use the most because I've had it for the longest, and they just seem to last for a very long time. Hero Art shadow inks come in a variety of colors from super light to super dark inks, and some of the shadow inks, not all of them, come in these little ink cubes, which are very cost effective. And by the way, these little ink cubes fit into the Tim Holtz ink tin, which I'm going to show you a little bit later in this video, just a little tip there. The next company to offer these type of inks is Simons' Stamp. Now what I like about their line of inks, it's the same, same formulation, same properties, is that they just have a really good variety of colors. They have the basic colors, the reds, the blues, the greens, but then they have some more unique colors like the coral reefs and a lot of great gray colors. So it, actually there's not too much overlap between these two lines of inks and there's a lot of colors between them. So really this is just a matter of picking what colors you like and what colors you would use the most. I should also mention that Simon Says Stamp does have card stocks to match some of their inks. Now the next brand of this type of ink is from W Plus 9. It's called Pure Color. Okay, now here's the thing about this line of ink. The colors that Dawn from W Plus 9 selected are incredible. There are some really unique colors here, like the Sweet Gelato color. It's just beautiful. What I like about her color um, selection is that you can get some really cool color combinations very easily using her colors. So I highly recommend checking them out. I do want to mention again that with this formulation of dye ink, when you first stamp them, they will look uneven and splotchy, but as the ink absorbs into the paper, it will smooth out and give you a nice crisp image. Now this won't be wet when you touch it, it just takes some time to get it to absorb into the paper. Now there are a couple bummers about these inks. One is that they might stain your clear stamps, but that's okay, your stamps will be fine. The other is if you use some poor quality clear stamps, these inks don't really bubble up on, they might bubble up on the clear stamp. But if you buy made in the US stamps, which all of the ones I use are, you'll get good images every time. So now let's go to pigment inks because pigment inks are forgiving and you can use them on any type of stamps. 
Pigment inks, again, remember, are opaque and they kind of sit on top of the paper. So what you see on the color ink pad is exactly the color you will get when you stamp it. There are two brands of pigment inks that I use mostly right now. That is the Creative Color from Mama Elephant and Avriel's Pigment Inks. These are very similar inks. I don't know if they're made at the same place, but between the two you have all the colors that you need and they are really good pigment inks. So you'll see on my stamp, I can see that my stamp is completely covered with the ink because it's this opaque ink. And when I stamp it, I get a good result right away. This will be a wet ink. If I touch this right now, it will smear. So I either need to give it time to dry or heat set it or put on clear embossing powder to make sure that it doesn't rub off. Some people say they have trouble with it not wanting to dry. Uh, I don't know, I, mine seem to dry if I heat set them or if I give them enough time. But that is something to consider too. The pigment ink, one of the nice things about pigment inks is it will um, clean off your stamp and it won't stain your stamp. So if you want perfectly clean stamps, this is definitely ink for you. Now let's talk about specialty inks. Some of these inks are dye inks, some of these inks are a little bit different, but they all have something extra special about them. First up is the Studio Calico Color Theory ink. This happens to be a dye ink, but there are some really unique properties to it. Now notice that their ink pads are a little bit smaller than other ink pads, but they stack really well, so they're designed to stack. And actually the size, really, I, I kind of like the smaller size. It's big enough for what I need. Now there are some beautiful colors in this color line, but what makes this extra special is the second generation image that you can get. Second generation is where you don't ink the stamp up again and just stamp it again for a lighter image. Not all inks will do this very well, and this ink really does. You can even get a third generation out of it, and this is a really fun technique, and it also allows you to have a variety of colors, but only in one ink pad. You get the same, um, you get a darker and a lighter from the same ink pad. Also, these inks can be used with Copic markers. There aren't many inks that can be used with Copic markers, but this one you can. But check it out. Here's a first, second, and third generation of this ink. I just think it's beautiful, and I've done videos um, with the second generation stamping, so I'll link to those too. Next we have Archival Ink from Ranger. This is an ink that's been around for a long time, but I what caught my eye is the Wendy Vecchi just came out with some great new colors in this line of ink. So I bought them and I'm so happy with how well they stamp. Now this is an oil-based ink that's a little bit different than others. Uh, the, but it really boils down to is it's permanent on a variety of surfaces. So if you're one of those that likes to stamp on a bunch of different surfaces, this is an ink that you should check out. But I was really happy with how well it stamped on paper too. Next up is the Tim Holtz Ranger Distress Ink, and this is the ink I probably use more than any other, but I don't actually use it for stamping. Because of its unique properties, one of which is that it reacts with water, there are a ton of techniques that you can do with this ink. I encourage you to check out all my YouTube videos. I do a ton of videos with this ink, so I'm not going to go into what you can do with this ink. Instead, I want to talk about what distress inks you need. Now, there are full ink pads, there are little ink pads, and there are ink blending tools. In the past, I've collected all the full ink distress ink pads, the big ink pads, and these ink blending tools. They're definitely a must have for applying ink, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But they've recently come out with these mini ink pads, and many people have been asking about it. I think I'm going to make the switch. Here's why there really is no need for a full ink pad. You can instead get the mini ink pads and get the distress ink re inker, so you can re ink them often. I really like these tins that uh, Ranger has come out with. They hold them very nicely. And check this out. You can take your little mini ink blending tool foam and sit it inside the bottom of your ink pad. You can take it out, use it with that ink color, and then when you're done, you take the foam and put it back into the bottom of your ink pad and store it in this little tin. That is so handy. That way you can have a foam for each of your colors. Now these take up a lot less room than the big ink pads. And instead of investing in all the big ink pads, you can get the little ink pads and the reinkers. Now these reinkers are great for reinking your ink pad, of course. I just cover the surface with a coat of the reinker and it absorbs in. But you can also use the reinkers for a ton of techniques too, like coloring your embossing paste or creating fun backgrounds. So that's why I've kind of come to the conclusion that I would recommend the minis with the reinkers. Now if you have the full ink pads, you can stick with that, but I think I'm going to be making the switch. 
Now let's go ahead and talk about inking tools since we just talked about distress inks. Now these mini ink blending tools are new from Ranger this year. They used to have a rectangle blending tool. They still have it, but I recommend this new round one so much more. It's easier to get into small areas and the round uh, foam is much easier to work with. Now I use these with distress inks. I start off of my paper and work my way on to get a nice blended look. But you can use these with other inks by all means, but they definitely work great with the distress inks for a fun background. So I don't know about you, but I make mistakes in stamping quite often, and these Fantastics are an inking tool that are helpful if you make little mistakes. This puts a little bit of the ink down in little areas. So say you stamp an image, I'm going to mess up the ink here, and you stamp it onto your paper and you have this little corner that looks bad, but you don't want to start over. This is when I use the Fantastics. I can go get a little bit of ink on the tip of it, it's kind of like a styrofoam tip, and I can color it in to fill in the area. This is, these are just handy to have. Um, now once it's colored, it kind of stays that color, so I have one for every color family, and I just reuse them over and over again. Now you can buy these in small packs with a bullet point or a point tip, or you can get uh, a bulk pack, which I'll link to both. They're just handy little guys to have. Next is the Jumbo Dauber. Now I really like this ink applicator, but they are kind of pricey, so I only have one for each color family, not one for every ink. But check how, out how well it does a background because the edges are kind of pulled up. It's nice and smooth. You don't get like a harsh edge on it. Now these are great. I really like these for pigment inks, and I've done videos before where I've created a soft background using these Jumbo Daubers. You can buy them individually or in a bulk, and I'll link to both. Okay, now this brings us to cleaners. I talked about this with stamps the other day, so I'm only going to briefly do this in case you saw that video. Now the first type of cleaner that I use about 80% of the time are the Kirkland Baby Wipes. These are by far my favorite wipes. They don't leave fuzz and they don't smell strong. I get these at Costco or on Amazon, so I will link to those. And I just have this in my drawer, and if I use one only partially, I'll just tuck it right back in and save it for later. These wipes really hold up well, so I'm able to get a lot of use out of one. Now, as I mentioned before, some inks are tricky to get off stamps, or some colors are harder to get off than others. And in that case, I like to give my stamp a really good clean. Now, there are two good stamp cleaners that I recommend. One is the Hero Arts Ultra Clean, the spray, which you see on the left. The other is this Simon Says Stamp uh, Ultra Clean Dauber. This one you just kind of rub right onto your stamp and then wipe it off with maybe a baby wipe or a cloth. And that'll get your stamp good and clean. Now what I've been doing for years is I use the Hero Arts Ultra Clean Spray with the Hero Arts Scrubber Pad. So what I do is I take the spray and I spray it onto one side of the scrubber pad here and I rub my stamp on there and that gets it good and clean. It kind of scrubs off any of the color and then I take it to the other side to dry it off and then my stamp is good to go. There's no residual ink even if the stamp is stained because by nature clear stamps made in the U.S. will stain. And now here, just to prove it, there's no red ink on it. I can go to blue and it's nice and blue. As I've mentioned, I've had the scrubber pad for many, many years and I just take out the pad every once in a while and run it underwater to get it nice and clean and then I'm good to go again. Now I found I'm most creative when I'm organized. So I created an organization system to keep track of the colors that I have. And I've created free ink swatch downloads that I will link to that you can print for most of the popular inks that are out there. All you do is print them and cut them and then stamp your little color swatches. The little squares fit nicely into these coin pockets, which I'll link to. And it's really been a handy system to keep track of the ink colors that I have. Now I will say there's no need for this many colors of inks. I have a lot of colors because this is my job and these are my tools and I kind of need to know how they all work, but you really don't need this many colors of inks, I promise. And I do also promise to someday put on my blog photos of all the colors of inks so you can do a comparison. It's just a big project and I haven't been able to do that yet. Now, people have asked why I keep rings on my pocket protect or my pocket sleeves instead of put them in a binder. I like the rings because it's smaller and I don't have to fold open a big binder. I can flip these back on each other. And also, I have a hook in my cabinet where I can just hook um, this, these little swatches to hang in my cabinet on one of these rings. So I find that using the rings is just takes up a lot less room than using a binder. But you could use a binder if you want to. 
Okay, so that's it. Sorry this video is long. There's a lot to talk about with inks. But remember to check out my blog for links to all these products, which are also in the YouTube description. And my blog has shopping discounts and big giveaways. Thanks so much for stopping by and watching these videos. I hope you're finding them helpful. I do this series because I know there's a lot out there, and I'm hoping that these videos can help you decide which products are best for you. Thanks again, and we'll see you again soon.